Hey Territory Team, my name is Ian Ramsey. I'm a runner from Maine, where I live at sea level, but I spend a lot of time in the mountains at high altitude. So I'm gonna to talk to you about some ways that you can train for altitude. I also teach brain science, mindfulness, and physiology, and I'm really interested in how we can train adaptations to make ourselves stronger, more resilient, and adaptive. Altitude sickness occurs when you're exposed to low oxygen levels that you're not acclimated to. Typically, we're told to travel to your destination a few days before to acclimate to changes in altitude. But unfortunately, this is not always possible. What's more, it ignores the larger opportunity, which is to train for high altitude, low oxygen environments at low altitude, high oxygen environments at sea level, which gives you year round benefits, which extend to every aspect of your health, fitness, and performance. So how do you acclimate to altitude while living at sea level? The answer is that you have to get accustomed to low oxygen, which is what we call hypoxic, and also to carbon dioxide, which we call hypercapnic, training environments. If most of your training involves breathing through your mouth, well, then you're unnecessarily offloading carbon dioxide, which we call CO2, while failing to build an increased tolerance to it and leaving your nasal pathways, which are designed to increase oxygen uptake from the atmosphere underdeveloped. Your nasal pathways are designed for breathing. They have hairs that filter the air, and when you're breathing through your nose, you're in an aerobic state where your nervous system relaxes and you burn fat. As far as breathing goes, your mouth is really only an emergency system. Your mouth is designed more for eating and communication, so that when you breathe through your mouth, as most runners do, you take in oxygen less efficiently, you jack up your nervous system in a more anaerobic state, and you burn sugar. And if you're doing that, your capacity to perform well in low oxygen environments at altitude is compromised. And your big mountain adventures are probably gonna be less than ideal or safe. So here are two simple practices to build up that CO2 tolerance and develop those nasal pathways. First, maintain nasal breathing for at least 90% of all training. It's gonna take some work. Uh, save mouth breathing for all out anaerobic efforts at the very end of training sessions. Now this will seem hard at first, but if you practice, you'll adapt pretty quickly and you'll train your nasal pathways and your metabolism to be more hypoxically efficient. I've been doing this for a few years and I rarely breathe through my mouth anymore, even if I'm doing a big climb or intensive interval training. So it is possible, and it saves that mouth breathing gear for when you really need to push it and go to 11. So practicing a habit of nasal breathing gives you a good metabolic base. Second, you can build on that by practicing this altitude exercise three to five times per week. Walk casually for one minute, then inhale normally and exhale gently, pinch your nose closed, and walk as many paces as you comfortably can with your nose pinched shut and not breathing. When you feel a medium to strong need to breathe, resume breathing with small, short breaths for 15 seconds or so, and then go back to normal breathing. And repeat that eight to 10 times per session. This will make you even more hypoxically efficient and used to moving in a low oxygen environment. Now I'll say that you shouldn't do this if you're pregnant or if you have existing health concerns. I'll also say that everyone responds differently to altitude and physiological adaptation but I can promise you this will make a big difference. So hopefully that will help you to crush it in your next adventure at altitude. Feel free to reach out to me or go to ianramsey.net for more resources. I hope I have a chance to run with you on the trails. Stay wild.